special guest, Marilyn Penny. Welcome, Marilyn. Hi. Hi, Joey Lynn. Hi, Heather. Great to Hi. great to see you both. Yeah. We've had you on our show before, so it's exciting for you to come back and share with us your new-ish venture. I think this is something that you've been doing for a while, but um, you're really promoting it now, I guess. Maybe those are the words. Yes, I have been doing it for a while. Um, I think I'm just coming more into my gifts and it's becoming you know, a, a greater impact I'm seeing with the property clearing. So yeah, I want to talk more about them. Yay. Amazing. So <laughs> energetic clearing for a property. <laughs> what kind of property? What does that mean? Like what? <laughs> I got all the questions. What? What, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Okay. So essentially a property can be a plot of land somewhere where a house sits, a building sits, a farm sits, uh, you know, it's, it's a plot of land that someone is um, living on or has a business on and it's, you know, it's has a lot of history. So what I'm finding is a lot of people are not feeling good in their spaces and they don't know why and quite often you can you can clean your place you can declutter your place you can consciously make it great you can feng shui it until the cows come home but if there's some energetic history in that house you won't feel a hundred percent like that's your place until we get in there and actually clear it out mm. you know what you um i was perusing your website it's gorgeous by the way <laughs> you. and you were talking about like the history of the space energetically yeah. and how you know there's remnants like a, a, you related it to like mm -hmm. an artist's tapestry I think is what you said um like tell us how that happens like why does that happen well, like why isn't it when they move their junk out everything goes with them like why <laughs> why do things stay yeah. You would think so. And not everything stays. So, I mean, there could be a house where multiple families have come and gone. People are living there. People have passed away in the space. People have uh, uh, suffered depression or grief or illness. Um, some things are going to just get stuck. And it's just that it's those energetic residues those are the things that um, hang around and then the next people that come in get to enjoy those <laughs> energetic residues that aren't always so lovely um so that's that's why you want to go in and and clear those out and and the house actually has a soul and the building it has a soul and and because i am an energy expert and i work with souls and soul clearing it just makes sense that you you can go in and look at the soul's history. Um, I, I use primarily the Akashic records to go in and read for your house as I read for your soul. And I'm able to find out what's in here, what's in here that's causing trouble for the people who live here. What, what does the house or the property or the, uh, the building, what does it need in order to elevate its vibration? And I'm able to have that conversation. And it's really, it's really cool to tell someone, Hey, your house said to me that it's feeling sad and it need, it could really use this. For instance, one was this, this house wants a sign on the house that says it belongs to this family. Could you do that? And it's like, well, of course I could do that. You know, and another one is it needs a little bit of, it wants a little bit of update. Can you paint or can you, and, and the client came back and said, actually for Christmas, we bought a whole bunch of new decorations and, you know, we just sort of did that, you know, and I said, that's what the house is looking for. And then they start to feel better in the space because the house is more chipper and <laughs> everybody's a little bit happier. I think one of the things that, uh, has been so amazing, like looking at some of the, the clearings that you've done 
is the work that you do with realtors and brokers. And uh, one in particular that really stands out to me is, you know, a particular property that it just wasn't moving. Um, you know, the the realtor was kind of like, gosh, you know, this this property is just not moving. And so you went in and and cleared it. And when you were like communicating with the house, you know, you had expressed to the house that it needs to let them go, you know, and that someone new is going to come in that's going to love it just as much as these last ones did. And the minute that that happened, it was like two days and the house sold. And so I think that it's yeah. really incredible um, how how important it is to do that type of work, like to have that type of work done if you're living in the home or even if you're like trying to sell the home or a realtor, you know, is trying to sell the home or you're trying to buy a home. Like there's a lot of uh, things that I think that can get sort of like stuck inside the house, like you're saying. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, having someone like you there to assist is massive. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, yeah. I really enjoy it. And like you were saying, sometimes um, the house is holding on to the family or the people that are there. And sometimes the people are holding on to the house as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So if they want to sell it, you know, but they really I mean, consciously, yes, they've hired a realtor and they put the sign in the lawn, but they haven't actually gone into their heart and released that house from them. So it's very it is an important process to go to the house and say, listen, it's it's time. Your people want to let you go. You need to let them go. And you're going to get a great new family coming in there. And by clearing that energy, we're going to attract the right people for that home to make that home a happy place. Now, when you say go to the home, you're are you actually going to the home or are you like is this like a, like, do you do this work remotely or do you actually go to the, the property? Yeah, that's the best part. I don't have to go to the property at all. It's all about the energy. So I can do this work remotely, um, which is brilliant because you don't have to be home. It doesn't, you know, you, you don't even have to be participating. You can hire me to clear your property and I will do it and I will send you a report and we're done. <laughs> and, you know, so and a realtor, it's you know, Go yeah. Ahead. One of the things that, um, you know, I, I, in full disclosure here, I had Marilyn clear uh, my property. I'm preparing to have her clear some family members' properties. But um, one of the things that I think is really interesting about the property clearing is the land assignment. Um, mm. You know, how the land is assigned can really influence the property too. So like, tell them, Marilyn, about the land assignments, because that yeah. to me, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> Who knew? Okay, so, so when land is created, it's energetically assigned. So this is fascinating for me to learn, too, way back when I started this work. And um, so there are things that we look for. We look for um, sacred site, a battleground or a burial ground. So I'm simply asking the question, um, is this land assigned other than a home or other than a business? What What is happening or what happened on that land when it was first created? And how is that impacting the vibrational state of the building that's on it now? So for instance, if I have um, a family that's, you know, they're, they're bickering, it's the Bickersons and they don't know why. They're just like, I don't know why we're so like at each other's throats sometimes, or sometimes a little spat can turn into a big argument. I'll go in and do some clearing. I'll find some negative energies, but I'll also find out perhaps that that home the land is on was originally assigned as a berry, as a battleground. So I get a lot of, oh, that makes sense. You know, <laughs> can you reassign yeah. that land assignment? Like, how does that work? Yes, yes. So I make a request. So and I'm using the records and I, I find out all of the things that are attached to the property that are not of the highest good of the people there. I will clear those out and I will request a reassignment and say, okay, this land is now a home and a home office. So we just need to reassign that. And that just, you know, that just, you can feel the sigh that comes out of that and just that, you know, that just stabilizing the energy of the home, which is, yeah, I've had some tremendous feedback from reassignments in particular. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So what else are you looking for when you're energetic cleaning or what else comes up? Um, so initially what comes up is open portal ways. So these are like, if you imagine your property is Swiss cheese and it's just allowing negative energies to come and go. It's allowing what we call earthbound souls. So these are souls that are still earthbound and are a attaching to the energy in the home to stay connected to it. So say someone passed away unexpectedly that lived in a home. Well, their soul may want to stay connected to that space and they'll connect into someone's say their, their feeling of grief or sorrow or loss, and they'll stay earthbound. But that's not healthy for the people in the property. And it's also of the highest good for that soul to move on. So I'm able to actually send them off with love, disconnect them, you know, from the property and then remove that, those feelings of sorrow and grief and loss so that the, the people in the property then can, can move on and can, ex can expand, right? That's what we want. So like beings will come through these portal waves? Yes. And they're, and remember they're energetic. So you don't, you don't feel them or see them, but actually some people <laughs> do tell me that they have, you know, they have seen things in the night, they have hands waving in their face, or they feel like hands, or they seem to be some beings in the house. I've had a lot of instances where um, pets, how, you know, the, the cats and the dogs will go into a room and interact with something. Um, and, yeah, this happened a lot. And actually, after I cleared, the, the pets are now relaxed. I had uh, one instance where pets were actually having seizures in the night because of all this activity, all this energetic activity. Oh so, gosh. you know, yeah. So once we did the clearing and um, the pets settled right down and it was everybody was just sleeping better. And I was happy to hear that. And the seizures <laughs> stopped? Yeah. Yeah, wow. they did. because they were so uh, upset with what was happening in the house and their people weren't sleeping well. So that impacts the pets too, right? So they were, yeah, it was really, it was super interesting. I, I really liked, enjoyed working with them. Wow. Okay. So portal ways, land assignment and portal ways. What else are you looking yes. for? And then I'm looking for negative thought forms. So I want to know, okay, so what are, what are the people feeling in the house that's getting stuck? So quite often things like, you know, disappointment, confusion, isolation came up a lot during COVID and post COVID, like people were just yeah. feeling isolated and yeah, and lonely and, and just and when those feelings get stuck and then you say, say you've gone past it, say you go through depression and I've experienced that myself and know what that's like. You've gone past it consciously. So you've worked on yourself and you, you feel better, but that, because that's gotten stuck in your space, every time you feel a bit low, it's going to pull you down further. It's just going to make it bigger. So it's really important to go in, especially if you've been through some kind of traumatic experience or you you've moved into a house where you know there's been a lot of upheaval or trauma anything like that it's really important to get a fresh you know get a fresh start with with nice fresh energy in your space it's going to connect to your highest good and to your soul's journey so that you know because you spend a, we spend a lot of time in our spaces you know it's supposed to be your safe and comforting and that's what i want people to experience yeah Especially now that we're, you know, a lot of people are working from home and yes, you know, yes. I mean, the question that comes up for me is, is this kind of like for, I know you talked a little bit about the real estate side of things. We'll put a pin in that for a second, but for the individuals mm -hmm. living in a space, is it kind of like a one and done or is this something that you would like routinely do like washing the windows on the outside of your house every year, <laughs> <laughs> like something like that? Um, well, initially it's, it's um, sort of going in and doing a really good scrub down and, and getting a fresh space. And then, yeah, absolutely. I would say once in a while, once a year, or if you feel like you've had 
um, you know, a particularly tough time that, you know, at work or there's been some, you know, deaths in the family, things like that, that you've gone through, you might want to have a refresh. So I can just go in and say, okay, we've protected you from things coming into the house. However, you can be in your house and still create negative thought forms that might get stuck. So those are the things we still need to go in and just touch. It's like touching up your paint on your car, right? Or touching up, you know, the paint in your house or fixing things up or doing a little renovation. So we're doing a little energetic renovation. Yeah. Wow. Well now, and then it kind of ties for me at least into why when you're selling your home, it, you're going to do all of these touch-ups. I remember when Nate and I sold our, our house in Gibbons, <laughs> you know, like baseboards, yeah. painted doors, like there's <laughs> so many things that we did on the surface to make it look beautiful um right. but now i see the energetic aspect of it like if all of your history energetically is held within those walls you need to start yes. cleaning that up um mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that, that would be really powerful do you have any examples of clients um either on the selling the house side of things or on the mm -hmm. living in the house side of things outside of kind of what you told us about the open portal ways with the the cats and the animals and stuff like that but energetic mm -hmm. experiences like any stories you want to share with us um yeah I actually I worked with someone who um had what we call their earthbound souls, we call them disruptive earthbound souls because they're the ones that have been around a long time. So they start to flicker your lights and, and, you know, and, and mess with you essentially. So I did have one particular client who uh, he said, Oh, you know, my friends are back. Cause he would tell me they would come in the night and wave in his face. And it's it's like, oh no. So, so, you know, it took a little time and extra care. We worked together on it. And, uh, and you know, and he had some gifts too and, and some spiritual work that he was doing on his own as well. But um, yeah, so we finally got to a place and his his dog too would get quite agitated and, and upset about things that were going on in the house. So, so we were able to really calm that down. So that's just really a really nice feeling um just another just quick example of something because we were talking about when you sell your house you you clean it up and you you know you declutter and you do all these things well part of what really helps with the clearing is that you get that motivation to actually do that and i did a clearing like that for someone who was kind of stuck was had retired was living in a house that was you know way too big for them had a lot a lot of clutter and a lot of things to get rid of they wanted to sell the house but they just didn't have the motivation to get it going. So we did that clearing work. And then it was like, oh, it's like turn the light on. Okay, now we need to go. Now we're going to get motivated and, and do all this. And, you know, a year later, house sold, moved on, got rid of a, a lot of things and, and just starting a whole new life. And that's, you know, that's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> like, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things like when we were talking before um in an outside conversation we were talking about um like cremains so how yes. you know how people will keep their dead relatives around in urns or mm -hmm. they'll keep their dead animals around in you know little boxes or whatever um you had some really interesting information about that and i think this is like something that is like Pro tip right here, everybody take notes, <laughs> because this one is going to blow your mind about how amazing you can handle this situation. Marilyn, tell us, what do we do with cremains? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, first of all, if you are planning at some point to spread the ashes, please do that. <laughs> Please remove them from your home and particularly from places like your bedroom where you're sleeping. Um, you, If you want to have your cremains in your house, put them near a plant, something with roots that will transmute the energy that is still 
hovering around the urn. So it's actually bringing out some energy that needs to be transmuted. And I actually had a friend who had her cremains and her elderly father would sit in a rocking chair not too far away. And there was a plant across the room. And when I told her, she immediately made adjustments and came back to me two days later and said, it's much better in here. Thank you. So that's yeah. just something very small. And even, even animals that you, a lot of people um, will have a burial plot for their animals in their, um, in their yard or in, on their land, um, have something that's rooted near those burial plots, because that's, it's going to take the energy from anybody that's around it. So pets or people that are out there. So yeah, our, are rooted we're rooted to mother earth and mother earth can help with with the transmutation of those energies yeah what about um like avid hunters who have uh, i don't know what to call them but like heads <laughs> on their oh, oh yeah the heads yeah. oh the heads yeah yeah, yeah. Well, or like just I even like that. the horn racks and stuff like that like i don't know what the proper term is but um, yeah, I mean, I would maybe come up with some energies when I dig into the property that are attached to that or attached to the emotions or feelings of um, not only the animal, but the hunter himself or herself. Um, so I'm able to transmute that energy. And again, I would just suggest everybody should have some potted plants in their house, something with roots, something that helps, you know, uplift the energy of the space. <laughs> And <laughs> I'd point to this one, but it's you have, like, yeah. <laughs> yours is yours is off to the side there. We can see its little leaves trying to pop in yeah. over there, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, plants. Yeah, are I thought our that friends. was. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. You know about cremains and remains, and you know burial grounds and stuff like that. About how much. Uh, the, you know, when you were telling me about how like that extreme like yin energy will, uh, or is it yang? I don't remember. Um, anyway, when it, that extreme energy that it actually will like pull the life force out of like the living, like peoples and animals and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, everybody needs lots of plants, lots of plants, you know, because I have, yeah. I've had three, um, three animals, three pets that have died and they, I have their cremains and I have them on a windowsill in my living room and um, putting plants. So I have like, you know, a box here, a box here and a box here. And then in between, I had these two huge plants and putting them there just changed the, energy in the room like instantly instantly mm -hmm. so you know that is like an amazing pro tip free tip everybody from Marilyn <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had no so idea I never I would never would have thought of it and you know what I think that that's one of the things that is not an issue in our society but a thing that comes up in our society is we don't think about all of the energy that is held in the objects the spaces, um, mm -hmm. like the, like ourselves, what we're leaving behind or like shedding like hair <laughs> everywhere we go. Um, the experiences yeah. that we've had, when you really start to think about all the things that you've been through in one particular space, that, that baggage really adds up quickly. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's really important to, you know, to try to let go of things like, you know, I know they hold memories and they're special things, but sometimes like for me, my marriage was 25 years and I, you know, I finally let go of my dress and my ring. Like it took me many, many years, but just letting go of those, I could just feel myself feel like I could move on finally. Like it's, it's, it's a, it's a lot. And some people just, they don't want to let go. So you do it in little, little bits. If you, if you can just try to give something away, or maybe, you know, if you're, you're holding it in boxes, you know, it can be, it's going to be smothered, like all your little bits and pieces and things you don't use anymore, you know, open up the box, air it out, shift it around, <laughs> you know, make peace with your, with your stuff. And if you don't need it anymore, pass it along to somebody who can use it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I got Marilyn to do an energetic clearing on our office space that we have. Our intention is to let it go. And I honestly couldn't believe the difference in, in the feeling that I got when I walked back into that space for the very first time, like I literally walked through the door and I had forgotten about the energy clearing. Like it wasn't going there to feel it out or anything like that. <laughs> I was going for a different reason. And I walked in and I had to do like a double take uh, in a circle. Cause I was like, am I in the right office? Like I felt like I walked through, a, I don't know, time warp or, or something. It was just so much lighter it felt like I could breathe in there. Like it just felt very inviting and very welcoming. And you know what? It's funny because I didn't realize or I didn't notice the energy of it before. It was always very welcoming, but it was just different, mm -hmm. a lighter vibration mm -hmm. walking into it. Um, the, the last time that I was there, it was amazing. And you know, the thing is when I, when you did my, um, my property, it's funny because I thought for sure that there would be kind of a lot of riffraff here because, you know, because of who, you know, Quinn and I are, you know, we, I channel a lot of different beings, you know, we're constantly communicating with the other side here in this house. And so it's like, I thought for sure it was going to be just a giant shit show, to be honest. And and the fact that the house that we live in, um, you know, it was only lived in for nine months before we moved in, but the person who lived here died here. So I thought for sure, maybe she'd be hanging around or some of her relatives may be hanging around. And so I was actually surprised at how uh, like little there was really to report, you know? And I was like, I remember <laughs> when I first asked you about like the, the, um, like the land assignment, you know? And I was like, it wasn't assigned as anything. It was just a nothing. It was just an empty. And you were like, yep, just an empty. And I'm like, wow, that's probably why, honestly, we were like called to this space. And like, you know, we were trying to buy a house during a, an extremely difficult market. I mean, we were getting oh, outbid by 50 to $100,000 every single time. We, it, it, we just, we couldn't compete. We just couldn't compete. We were going to be homeless. <laughs> and so when we arrived here, this was a pocket listing. You know, we didn't have to compete for it. It just, it was like the red carpet got rolled out for us. And I think it's because like, for me personally, having a space that doesn't have a lot of energetic baggage is extremely important for the work that I do. You know, right. if I get a lot of, uh, you know, riffraff in my field, it just, you know, it's like hurting cats sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so right. I am extremely grateful for the work that you do, because I think that a lot of people don't realize how much their environment actually influences their quality of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. And oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Marilyn. I was just going to say that people are um, attracted to the energies that they are currently, you know, feeling. So when they choose a house and they go move into that house, 20 years could go by and they're still in that house. So they've gone in there with a certain energy level and all of these things have happened to them over those 20 years. They're no longer connected to their house energetically. Like it's not moving that the house can't let go of things like we can let go of things. So it's important to really match you up with your house and continue to do that because people will sometimes go to work. And I was thinking even today, it's like, you know, maybe that's why a lot of people spend a lot of time outside of their house or they they spend a lot of time at work or they spend a lot of time. They don't because maybe they don't feel super comfortable in their house, but they don't know why. Or it could be, you know, the connections with others in the house, you know, and they're just not understanding what's going on. So sometimes it is energetic. It isn't always you. <laughs> I'm here to tell you it's not always you. Sometimes it's just that stuff stuck in your space. So go there first and figure that out and then go. And then we can do some more stuff if that doesn't do the whole ticket for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, just to, to look at our chat here, Kat says, 
her puppies will stare off in the doorway and not move. Kind of freaky. Uh, I definitely feel a neg negative energy in this home. And then she asked, how do you clear energy from someone else's living space in the same house to make it feel more peaceful? I think quick answer is hire Marilyn. <laughs> exactly. Definitely. <laughs> quick answer, hire Marilyn. <laughs> quick <Yeah>. answer, <laughs> hire so um, like Marilyn. Marilyn, but, when you yes. are um it, when you are working with um maybe not like homeowners, but like renters, let's say. So like, mm -hmm. you know, either you're working in an apartment building or you're working with a property that has, you know, people who live there, but aren't like actually related to one another. Is there right. any change in your process or do you, like, do you have to get permission from everybody in, that lives in the house? Or like, how does that actually work when you, when you clear a property like that? Okay, so technically, um, I just need permission from whoever is financially responsible for the space. So if it's somebody renting the space, then the people who are renting it. And normally, like if it's an apartment building, I'm I'm technically clearing just your apartment. However, that impact will spread. So your neighbors might end up being a little nicer to you if you have some, you know, crispy neighbors or, you know, <laughs> or, or people who are fighting or, you know, in other apartments, like you'll just notice. I had somebody actually say their landlord was treating them better. They were renting a house and like, they don't even live with the landlord, but the landlord came to see them and, and offered them something after I've cleared the property. Like it was just these really fascinating things that are happening. And, and if you have like a multi, you know, multiple people are renting the property in one space. Well, well, that's fine. If, if they all would like to agree, they're all financially responsible. They just say, yes, give me energetic permission. It's, it's nothing super fancy. It's just hire me. And that gives me permission <laughs> essentially to do, to yeah. do the clearing for you. Mm -hmm. Um, another question, if going mm -hmm. kind of back to, to Kat's question, I think, I'm um, just inferring a little bit deeper here. Um, if you were, were to clear a space where there's multiple people living in one space, will mm -hmm. that, um, let's say if one person was super negative, could that potentially change their attitude also? Like I know you kind of talked about neighbors, but. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. So what happens is I'm clearing the energies. And when I, when I, you know, I send a report to someone or I, maybe I have a chat with them about their property, they will notice if I have say four or five different energies that are coming up, they'll say, Oh, that's my daughter. Oh, that's my son. Oh, that's my husband. Like everybody has a connection to a particular energy. So I'm like, as you feel it's appropriate, please share this with the people in the house to say these energies have now been transmuted. They are no longer belong to you. We've we've gotten rid of them now. So if you felt that way two years ago and you still feel that way, maybe it's not you anymore. Maybe it's just stuck in the house. So, yeah, so absolutely. It will impact different people in different ways. So somebody might be getting a better sleep in the house and somebody might feel motivated to go take a course somewhere and somebody else might be, oh, I want to exercise more or this one wants to eat better. Like it's it's fascinating how many things can how many moving parts it is and how many people can be impacted by one clearing. Wow. So if you have crappy uh, roommates, you might be able to. <laughs> smooth things over <laughs> just by yeah. clearing the space <laughs> exactly exactly yeah uh, heather did you have something else you wanted to add um i was just going to add that uh when i also was taking a look at your website and i noticed that when you schedule with you there's like a so a little bit of like intake questions that you ask, you know, about like the address and stuff like that. And I thought that was really interesting. It's a really great website. So beautiful. Um, Amazing so, designers. Um, <laughs> so, so I, um, I think that that's really neat. Some of the questions that you ask there um, just to kind of like 
get the person thinking about maybe experiences that they've had in their home or like what they're mm-hmm. actually kind of dealing with so that you're, I mean, when you go in to do, you don't have to know anything about the property because it's just it's energy and energy doesn't lie. Right. So like, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to, you know, present to the property and clear the property, whether they answer questions or not. But by knowing some, a little bit of information, you're able to like kind of um, do the clearing as you would normally, but also like pinpoint and target specific issues, which I thought was really amazing. Um, Mm -hmm. So like, I love that you have that um, as part of the booking process, because I think that that's um, a great way for, you know, the person who's having it done to kind of get an, you know, get their mind thinking about what they're experiencing in the house so that they can tell you so that you can be like, let me take care of that for you. I just, it feels very supporting, um, having that mm-hmm. there. So, um, for the rest of the world to you, thank <laughs> you for being so thoughtful that way. <laughs> Well, that's nice. And it's, it's helpful, I think, too, because if you, you know, being in, in a house in a, in a crowded city is different than being a house on 40 acres. So if you tell me a little bit about your space and sort of what's going on, then I can put in some extra protection for you, say, or I can actually, you know, sprinkle a little, you know, growing dust on your farmland so that you have bumper crops or I can help, you know, your trees grow or I, you know, like sometimes you don't even think about these things, but just just giving me a little bit of detail about your property helps me to help you essentially. Yes. Oh my gosh. I just want to, I, I want to dote on you. I think is the right word a little bit because you're very conservative and <laughs> humble. And I don't know if people caught that, but like Marilyn can clean your space energetically or shift the energy of your space to like help your crop grow better help your plants grow better, help you, you know, call in more of the things that you want in your life. And something that is like a little bit of your bread and butter is helping people sell their home. I don't even know, but it's a ridiculous time times amount, whatever. I don't know how to say it. Uh, ridiculously f- much faster than exponentially. Ex- thank you. Thank you for the word exponentially <laughs> faster than, than other people are experiencing on the market. So not only do you have this beautiful ability to change the way it feels to be in your home, change that connection that you have with your home, but also, you know, like add this layer of abundance to your entire life. And if you're looking to sell your home, get it sold a lot faster. That's just. Well, and I think, I think the, the alternative because could also be done. I mean, if, if someone is looking to purchase a particular property, you know, is there something that can be done there, Marilyn? Like, you know, if they're like, oh man, I have my heart set on this house. I really want to buy this house. You know, there's a bunch of offers in on this house and this is the one for me and I just love it. Is there anything like energetically that you can do to support that? I know that that kind of could cross the line a little bit. Well, what I'm thinking though is that it could be that in clearing your own house and releasing that house from you allows you then to be open for purchase of a new house. You know, and I always say to people, you know, if you're meant to have that house, if you're energetically aligned with that house, then I think it will be yours. I think people get very, you know, they push sometimes for something that maybe there's a reason why it's not working out. So, you know, think of that energetically too. Is this really the right place? And if this doesn't work out, something better is in store for me. So just remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful message. Well, that's (laughs) our time today. Thank you so much for being our guest here, Marilyn. That was very insightful and inspiring. And if you're looking to connect with Marilyn, we have dropped her website, Energy Shift Properties. Uh, com, I believe it is, into the chat so you can find her there and you can book directly on her website. Um, thank you so much Fantastic. for being with us. And we're so excited to hear more about this as things unfold. And if you have more questions for Marilyn, just drop them in the chat or connect with her on her website. I think that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, I think so. I think no. so. Marilyn, anything, any last, any last things? 
<laughs> no, clearing just property. book with Marilyn. She's amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I love you guys. You're welcome. Amazing. You're welcome. We, we love, love you too. too. Okay. Thank you for watching. We will see you next Bye. week.